Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the call stack and how it relates to exception handling. I'm going, out, going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select menu, Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to exceptions, the call stack. The stack and heap are two basic memory areas available when running your Java programs. If you've been following my tutorial series, then you should understand that object instances are stored in heap memory. Most objects have instance variables, and those instance variables live on the heap as part of the object. Also, I discussed that there is a special area of the heap called the string literal pool where string instances are stored. Now, for the most part, method invocations and local variables are stored in the stack memory. The subject of Java memory management is complicated, and certain details are beyond the scope of this tutorial, so I'm going to provide you with a general idea of how the stack works. One other important thing to note is that stack memory is created and allocated to an individual thread. I haven't discussed the concept of multi-threading in programs, so don't worry about that just yet. Determining stack size. The amount of memory allocated to the stack is determined by the compiler based on criteria such as number of methods, reference variables, local variables, and so forth. Now, there are many other ways to increase the amount of thread stack size, such as the dash xx command line option specified when running the JVM. For example, if we put something in the command line like java minus xss 18m, and then the class name, um, Java will allocate a crazy large 18 megabytes of stack memory space. Now, the minus x command line options are beyond the scope of this tutorial, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what is to come. Creating the stack, deleting the stack. Now consider the following. I've got this class called my class with the main method entry point. And uh, of course the main method has the, you know, the parameter array of string type of args. And I also have um, this int i that I've initialized to 10 here. So when you run the JVM from the command line by executing Java my class, the very first thing that is placed on the stack is the main method. The next thing placed on the stack is the reference variable args, right? Because args is a reference variable to an array um, on the heap. After the primitive variable i, after that, the primitive variable i and its value are placed on the stack. Since no other statements exist, the stack is unwound as the main completes execution. i is removed, then args, then finally the main method. Okay, so let's call. Let's talk about the call stack because that's really what what we're after here. So, the call stack is basically a list of all the currently active methods. The granddaddy of all the methods on the call stack is the main method. And if you have been following my tutorials, you've heard me refer to it as your program's entry point over and over again. The call stack is composed of frames. So the first frame in the call stack contains the call or invocation to the main method. Suppose inside of the main method there is a call to invoke method A, and that method A then calls to invoke method B. Then you would have three frames on the call stack beginning with main, A, then B. Now the purpose for a call stack is to determine which method should return control once a method has terminated. When method B terminates, control is returned to method A. Once method A terminates, control is returned to the main method. Now how does this all relate to exception handling? As you will learn in my upcoming tutorials, exceptions that occur in frames higher up the call stack can be passed down to frames lower in the call stack as it unwinds. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I will limit my explanation of the call stack to just that. After all, the real subject is exception handling, so it is time to get back on track. Okay, I'm going to come down here and demonstrate the call stack in the source code. So let's uh, come down here and highlight all this. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one by right clicking, selecting new shortcut. Type in CMD, next, and finish. Go and open up the command prompt there and type in uh, Java C and then press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you get an error message and you uh, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit, you want to make sure you get that installed and configured before prior to continuing. 
Let's uh, type in CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a folder called Java using the MD command. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Um, I'm going to make a, another directory, and I'm just going to call this exception stack, and then change directories to that, and then notepad exception stack.java. Exception stack.java is going to be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Let's go ahead and paste all this in here. Okay, now it's going to look a little scary on some of this code, but anytime you see these two lines right here, completely ignore them, unless you're really curious about it. But this is just basically how I'm going to display the stack to the console at, that, at this particular instance here, right? So the first thing I'm going to do here in the exception stack method is I've got the main me or, uh, exception stack class. I've got the main method right here. First thing I'm doing do is display to the console building up the stack, that string literal there, right? Then this particular line will actually take all of the uh, threads on in the call stack and store them into this little array STE. And then I'm going to use an enhanced for loop to basically iterate through all of the values in the STE array, right? And I'm going to display them to the console. But like I said, these two lines, don't worry about them. They're beyond the scope of this tutorial, but I'm just using them to show you what the stack looks like. There in no way do you need to understand that. Now, however, this next line, you do, because I'm basically going to create a new one, class one object, and I'm going to invoke, it's invoke another method here. Now, in the invoke another method here, it is simply going to display to the console there. Now the stack is, and then I'm running those two lines again to print the stack, right? So that'll show us what's at the stack at this particular moment here, right? Then, I'm going to create a new two class object and invoke one and invoke the invoke one more method, right? Which comes down here in the two class invoke one more will simply display putting more on the stack, right? That string literal. And then those two lines again, which will display out everything that's currently on the stack. Okay. Now, once this statement has completed right there, right? Um, it will come down here and then just basically display removed invoke one more and display what's currently on the stack. Now once this whole method is done, right, then control is returned back to main and this statement is done executing, then it'll go ahead and display back to main and display what's currently on the stack there too as well. So let's go ahead and run this here. Check it out. Clear our screen, Java C. Clear the screen again, Java, and let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so let's scroll up here. So building up the stack, right? This is just as we're entering the main method here. We're always going to see the um, we're always going to see this get stack trace at the very top of the stack because that is the that is this method right here that we have to call to in order to load up our array of all of the of the current um, call stack, right? So we've got main at the bottom of the call stack and get stack trace at the top. All right, so now when we get into, we call the invoke another one here. At the very start of the invoke another, we'll say now the stack is, right? And so now the stack is, we've got main, invoke another, and then of course the get stack trace. Then when we invoke one more, which is this down here, will display what's at the, the top of the stack trace here, right? And so putting more on the stack, we've got main, then invoke another, then invoke one more, and then of course the get stack trace. Now, as we're unwinding it, right, this, this one has finished, this statement has finished here, so now we'll do remove one more and display what's on the stack. So you can see Remove one more, we've got main, invoke another, and get stack trace. And then of course, once um, this one is finished back here in the main, then we'll display what's currently on the stack at that point, which is get stack trace in main. And when we come back out here, and once this is done executing, this is the last, once this for loop, enhanced for loop is done iterating, 
then basically we're going to be done with the main method and then everything will get unwound off of the stack at that point including main itself okay so i'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that get rid of that and leave you with a, a couple final thoughts there so the purpose of this tutorial is just to present you with a general idea of how the call stack works. Now, as I continue my exception handling mini-series, I will elaborate on many of the concepts from this tutorial. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.